Okay, yeah. welcome to Black Belt Interviews with me, Master David Hodson. I'm absolutely delighted and uh, honoured to be uh, here today with Grandmaster Gerhard Brunner, uh, a traditional Taekwondo uh, master, Grandmaster, uh, from Tampa Bay, Florida. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining me. I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, thank you so much for thank joining you, me. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, very excited to meet you and, and for the first time and get to know you. Obviously, uh, we're both from ITF HQ. Um, so it's really nice to meet you on and, and get to know you that way. Uh, I just wondered, sir, if you were able to sort of begin with how you began Taekwondo and your your journey, where it began for you, and um, whether you could tell us about that. Well, I'm, I started um, with te traditional uh, Taekwondo in Munich um, when I was 17 years old, around 1975. Very good, yes. And... Uh, yeah, well, that's how I started it. Wow. So I, um, it was on my way to my job always. Uh, in my young age, in Munich, I was living in the village out uh, around 50 miles away from Munich. When I had to travel always three times a week to uh, to Munich. Okay. Um, to look, go in my school, you know. Yeah, yeah. In Germany, in Germany you go in a school for a job, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to, I passed, I passed always uh, when I walked uh, for, for, for the train to... Uh, um, uh, to my school, I passed by, by always under a little display uh, window or whatever, yeah. and there was yeah. an amazing kick in there. I don't know, always with Taekwondo, learn Taekwondo, things like this. No? And this was, um, in this case, this was Master Theo Nam who had a, a high jump and kick, broke something on the top. And when I always walked by on this picture, and I said, Well, sometimes I need to walk in. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, sometimes I did, 1975 in September. And uh, this is um, uh, was not on the front. This was not a front, a front building. So you had to go inside, you know, in the second, third house inside, and very dark and everything. You know, and you have to climb up on the fourth uh, floor and say, "Oh my God!" <laughs> so, <laughs> I, and this, in this, in, in this time, they had to take one of the schools hidden. Eh? Not right now. Everything nice front, front uh, window and stuff, right? Then okay, I climbed up in this uh, stair and well, and then I walked in this uh, in, a, in a booming. Busy place, and uh, they all kicked and sweated. And the smell at this time, of course, was good too, as you know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I, from the first time, I was hooked on this. No? So, I made my, 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 my first class, and uh, well, the rest is history. I'm still yeah. here, <laughs> I'm still Fantastic. kicking and punching. <laughs> so, were you, were you one of the youngest there, or was it a mixture? Or? Oh, I was 70. No, I'm pretty much this was all, um, this was a mixed, uh, a mixed group between, um juniors and adults no? so yeah I, I, I was the lowest belt that's for sure but so this was also a mixed class no? yeah 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 um, and that was with um you mentioned the instructor did you uh this was grandmaster su yonam was a korean and yeah. the owner from the school was uh grandmaster uh, kornberg so he was there was very well known in munich okay so he was the owner and and su yonam was the instructor or yes, the yes. master and uh, yeah i can remember when i did the first class and I was very well trained, you know, I'm I'm raised in the mountains and you do everything what you do in the mountains, huh? biking, hiking. Uh, yeah, and of right. course, you have, you have to join the soccer club when you're young in Germany, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I think I was in a good a good shape, man, after, I still can remember right now, um, I was three days so sore after this class. I said, man, oh. this is good. I like this. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so uh, was there a lot of fitness, a lot of uh, conditioning? Uh in the class was it was it obviously a tough class to do oh yeah no yeah well tough as well uh, as i said i was young now and i think in a pretty good shape it was in the moment not tough really but different you know of course yeah. different moves you know martial is different from all sports yeah. really and of course i was full in there and say oh nobody can beat me here now you know and yeah, i yeah. give it up anyway and don't show anything but the other three days later on oh my god my legs was hurting and it was a crazy. I said I was sore. I never was sore in seventeen years like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I said, well, this I like. I like this. I need to. I need to do this again. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There you go. So, did you find you were well suited for Taekwondo early, or did you have good flexibility then? Or no, not you... at all. Uh, no. As I said, you know, I played soccer a lot and uh, all all uh, running and climbing and bicycling. Uh, this time, you know, this time was. Uh, in in not in non in no sports was uh, stretching really important. Eh? The, like yeah. in the soccer, you you go in the soccer coach, you go in the, in the team, and they let you run. You know, you need to run. Why you should stretch? You know, 
yeah, yeah. Now yeah. it's different. Now, now, now everybody knows how important it's stretching and everything. Huh? So in my time when I started, I could, when I was standing straight, I could not uh, touch with my hand the, uh, the floor. Huh? Was yeah, not possible. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I think it's interesting. A lot of our listeners sometimes are, are actually beginners themselves, and obviously they might be struggling with taekwondo. And uh, to mm. hear that, obviously, some grandmasters were, were similar. It, it's obviously inspires them to carry on and, and develop themselves in that way. So, um, obviously, you got the bug, sir. Did you immediately? Did you want to train more straight away? Yeah, um, well, you know, it was happening. As I said, I still was in the team and everything, and a soccer team and blah. And uh, of course, and I was far away from Munich. So when when I finished my my trade school, you call it trade school now. When you go and uh, look for a job, then I had to go back. Uh, then I did not join. Um, I could not go to Munich anymore. And then I, I joined um, at, at my village, at Taekwondo school, where my brothers are already in there. Okay. And um, then my grandmaster was um, Heinrich Duldinger, and I was with him then the next ten years and so. And um, wow. here I get my back really, as you said. No? So I really start to train on a more consistent base and. Yeah, um, all this kind of stuff. Then I really got into it, no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So was this was this purely in a dojang, or did you end up being competing? And oh yeah, you... we were in a dojang. We what was a mixed dojang, you know? They 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 they, they practiced uh, taekwondo, and also uh, maybe you know this probably in uh, in Europe they have this this big thing uh, called Allkampf. This um, a mixed. It's very big in Europe. They make world championships and Euro European championships. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This is a mixed. Uh, thing between um, Chiu Chicho, Aikido, Hapkido, Karate, all, all okay. kind of stuff in there. Ne? And um, so it was a mixed style. And uh, first, I didn't like to do this, but I didn't like this when people grabbed me and stuff. So yeah. I sticked many years just for Taekwondo and I ignored the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but then after a while, I had to do this while my um, master had a heavy accident, a car accident, and he needed an instructor. Right. And uh, I was a blue belt in this time. Yeah, yeah, and that's how I got into it uh, to train more, uh, to learn the other style too, and uh, learn to teach too. And so, yeah, yeah, is that something you picked up? And did you find that quite um, you were natural to be an instructor? Or yeah, did you I think that's what it is really. So I really, on the beginning, I said I cannot do it. I'm a blue belt. I never did this before, and so on. And but he needed somebody really, and yeah. then I started to teach the lower belts, of course, why I was a blue belt. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I figured out how how. Do people like to come in my classes and how I think I could say this is pretty natural, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Fantastic. It just came to me then in Taekwondo, yeah. you know. Yeah, so you obviously a self-motivated person could motivate yourself yeah. and then help to motivate others. Um so uh were you particularly interested in the patterns to begin with, the sparring, the power, or mix? Oh well in the in the beginning I really like the sparring more. Yeah. And uh, um my grandmaster this time, um, Master Heinrich Dullinger, he was really um, open to more things, you know. So we joined more so karate opens, uh, championships, okay. karate opens, taekwondo open. So for we all kind of wild people met each other, and um, I was also competing in full contact for a while for two years. Okay. And um, but I'll, you get so many times hurt, and then I didn't like this anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm a strong competitor, but I, what I did not like always to get hurt on every weekend. Yeah. And then it sets your back with, with practicing again and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Then I stopped it. But now my, my passion was at the beginning really sporting. Yeah, yeah. What was the and then the I was, uh, Thanks to my brothers, I, I, I'm most likely my older brother. So that when we had the intern, intern championships in the school and you know, school championships and stuff and forms and stuff, and he beats me always in form. And I did not like this really. I said, man, why is he beating me always? Yeah, he's not really so much better as me, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yeah. so, and then I started to work more on the forms and then I really um, fall in love really with the basic, as we say, forms. So, yes, yes. Is this the, is this the John G. Dangan? Those yeah, right, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. John G. Dangan. Excellent, excellent, sir. Yeah. And in sparring in those days, what did you wear in sparring? Well, in sparring, we went just to class. Right. Did. That's, That's it. it. Yeah, on, on a helmet, of course, no? Yeah. But uh, nothing, no chest, no nothing for the feet. As it was, uh, this was the brutal time, you know. As so right, right now, when you see the when when you see MMA is new or uh, it's not new, not be just different. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. 
Excellent. Without, with, 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 with many less rules now as before, no? but of course this was also not takedowns. This was really straight, um, straight up fighting. No? Yeah. So there was no takedowns in this time. No? So yeah. they're not in this time. But I liked it for two years and three, or two and a half. Yeah, I don't know. And I won a few, a few, um, a few fights. That's good too. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So the sparring at the time was it uh, similar to now or different yeah, back then? The sparring is always sparring and punching and kicking. You know, there's nothing changed. No, I think it's pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't this time maybe more brutal or by you know, yeah, uh, it was more allowed. But now it's everything about safety, security, more as in this time. You know. Yeah, yeah, of course. But so, uh, what's different is and is not is MMA and cage fighting on all this. This is completely yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. But the stand up fighting is pretty much always the same. Not, nothing changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so Blue Belt instructing, helping the younger students, your own progression, you, 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 you're still teaching all the way up to Black Belt when you got your oh, first. Oh, yeah. I am 100% every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, when, when did you get your first degree, sir? It was around in the um, 75 started, around yeah. 79, 80s. Yeah, yeah. With like with my um, grandmaster with Heinrich Dullinger, and then he found, um, and then he uh, we saw a big demonstration in Munich with Grandmaster Kwanchewa, and that's how he connected to him. And from then on, I had, uh, we connected to Grandmaster Kwanchewa, and of course he did not um, honor our black belt, so he had to do him again. So I did okay. uh, black belt with him then one more time, I think in the 80, 80 or eighty one. And from there on, we was with Grandmaster Kwan. Then the the wild time stopped, and we did poor traditional taekwondo with Grandmaster Kwan Chiwa. Ne? Yeah. And from there on, I did pretty much everything for over almost over over almost thirty years. Uh, we was with Grandmaster Kwan. Ne? Wow. Yes, yes. And uh, and um, is he still alive, sir? Is he still around? Oh yeah, yeah. He lives in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He's 86 now, 87. Wow. He's not really active now anymore, but he still sees um, uh, people uh, visiting him once in a while. And I I call him maybe once a year or so. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So what would a test been like for your first time? You know, was there breaking involved or sparring? Yeah, testing um, in Master Con was always, you never know what's coming up, you know. Okay. Right now, in the time what we have now, everybody have a curriculum and yes, everybody yes. can prepare himself and stuff, you know. Yes. But at this time, you know, with the, with the Korean grandmasters, I'm pretty much all, all of them, not just Master Con. Eh? Um, they never told you when you test it. You never know when. You okay. you have to be ready now. You, you never ask for testing. Oh, my God, you, you ask you. Postpone for the next two years. <laughs> so pretty much, you know. Yeah, yeah. He just called you up and an event or so. Said, so now you're testing today. I said, hmm, okay. <laughs> so let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So was, uh, testing wise, completely different as we have now. No? So now yeah. everybody want to know, oh, when is my next testing on what I have to do and things like this, you know. That's yeah. Yeah, no, we, we've experienced that. Recently, we've been building up to something. We have a curriculum, but we were doing some things that weren't in curriculum. And they were getting very concerned that we might do that, you know. <laughs> but like you say, that's that's how you did, it was, you know. You yeah. could easily be asked, right. yeah, to do something. But, that... too, but these are also good when the people know what what to do. I think uh, uh, both sides is a good side, you know. Well, it's a different side, and so I think it's good now. We have a curriculum; people know what to do, and when you still, uh, as a you know, I'm old school. I still uh, uh, throw some surprises in, <laughs> so <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you just continue to train. You were helping, instructing, and and uh... no, no, I'm teaching. Uh, of course, when you have raised a school or a taekwondo family like I did, then of course you have you have to give your black belts and the other people a job too. And of course, have, uh, I teach most like higher belts. Yeah. So, so how long were you in Munich for until you you moved, you changed to you Tampa? So say it again. Uh, obviously, you, you begin. You began. Uh, in Munich, mm. uh, and you're from Munich, but now you're in Florida. Yeah, well, um, as I said, you follow in this. Um, I follow my grandmaster. No? My my grandmaster, uh, I think, uh, Master Corner found out too. I am. I can teach, and people like to follow me, and I become a good leader. So, um, as I said, I was a. Uh, um, I started to train in Munich, but then I, but I was living out on a countryside, uh, close to as in the Alps, close to the Austrian border. In this time in Miesbach and Schleswig and so on, eh? 
And from there, I had a little school. I, I opened my first school um, 84, 1984, in a little village, and in a gym. No? So it was not a school, it was just a group, a gym, where we, we trained two, yeah. two, three times a week or so. I had a, still a job too. And um, okay, and this school getting bigger then, and then I moved to Rosenheim, this is the next big city. Oh, yes, pretty yes. Close to the, pretty close to the border from Austria. No? And this was a big city with um, 30,000, 40,000 population or so. No? Yeah, yeah. And then I, this was my first own big school. No? So, and uh, yeah, from, uh, I was there, I don't know how long, uh, till almost 92 or so. No? Okay, and yeah, yeah. I had, then I had a big, a big event there in, uh, in, in the city hall. I, I rented the city hall for a big taekwondo uh, extravaganza with international guests. Also, of course, as um, as um, as a main guest, Master Kwon. Eh? And after this, um, after this event, he put me aside and said, "Oh, you you are too uh, you too good for for a small city. You need to go to a big city." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then I thought, uh, but this was Germany, and no? so in Germany, uh, okay, the Munich room was already pretty conquered for Master Kwon. There are tons of uh, Kwon Chiba schools, and also in the south and the west. But just uh, um, '89 opened uh, Berlin, as you know, no? from the west and the east side. And I said, nobody's in Berlin. Let's go to Berlin. And then I'm a Bavarian kid, went right in the east of Germany. <laughs> so, and then '93, I opened a school in in Berlin. And uh, after the grand opening in Berlin, 93, uh, something was happening in Florida with one from the masters from Master Kwon. And uh, we brought him after the grand opening, we took him to the airport in Berlin and uh, a few grand masters, as a few masters. And then he asked, who would like to come to, uh, to Florida? I need a master in Florida. Okay, yeah. That was the first to the hand. <laughs> So okay, there's a little bit of history behind me. I, I um, since '82 I, I visited Master Master Kwon in in Florida yes. for seminars and stuff. And I always the Florida. I like the Florida style. Always, mm, it's nice, it's warm, and yeah. cool people are at the lifestyle, you know. And and there, here we go. It just came up, wow. but but a grand opening for a big school in Berlin. Eh? Master yeah. Kwon looked at me. You just opened a school. You sure? I said yes. I'm sure. I you need me in Florida. Here I am. <laughs> So needed us three uh, three years. I must have gone. You could do nothing illegal or so, no? yeah. So needed us three uh, three years to get the green card. Yes, the yes. Protest to get the green card in this time was around three years, and after three years, green card arrived, and I moved to New York first. Where I was an official instructor in in his um, black belt center in um, the Fifth Avenue, oh, and right. was living in the in the Fifth Avenue black belt center for two or three weeks or so, and then. I moved up to Florida and then 97, 97 uh, opened in Florida. Wow. It's a kind of a big, <laughs> big change. Oh, uh, big change. Yeah. Big change. But you know, I was already successful in Germany with Taekwondo schools. Yeah. Also with, other, with my other jobs and so. And of course, then, then you, when you come from Master Corner, I don't know you met Master Corner once or so, but he was a very strong, dominant uh, grandmaster. And this what we got raised to pretty much. And well, I came to Florida uh, and I thought, well, I was successful in Germany. I can do the same in Florida. But then I figured out on the visiting as a, as, a, as a vacation kid or vacation man, when you just go for vacation once in a while to Florida, or you live there and you have to run a business and have to raise a family, it's completely different. Huh? Lifestyle, money-wise, everything just changed completely. I was like a baby, you know, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a hard way, but it was um, was good. Yeah, yeah, of course. And the students, obviously, teaching people from Germany now teaching people from Florida. Mm. The people were different to training, or they train the same ways. Very yeah. happy to do the tough training, the easy, you know. Well, um, well, it's, it's yeah. Well, it's not the same, but you have to deal with different. Uh, with people differently, no? yeah. so uh, for sure you can work in the Europe uh, with the with with, uh, with the people a little bit more tough, a little yeah. more stronger. You can have also sometimes some stronger words. What you cannot do in the United States, really, no? sure. sure. Uh, um, so, uh, well, it's a little bit different, not little much, bit. really. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to just to deal with him differently or talk to him different? That's my bit. That's the right way. Yeah, yeah. To explain. And uh, the language you 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 were fine with English. Speaking. Oh, bad. 
Where do you, as you hear, I still have a bad accent, right? <laughs> so, how do you begin? Oh, no, uh, still, when I uh, when I pick up the phone in my school and, and I say something, huh? What do you say? We don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so, it's getting better now, no? but at yeah, the yeah. beginning, it was really bad. That okay. was really bad. But yeah. I just had really just vacation English a little bit, you know what I mean? What he used for to order beer or something to drink or to eat or so, you know? Uh, on ask for directions, but that's pretty much. But business wise, so oh my god, it was a whole learning process. <laughs> wow. And now your schools, you, you have several schools now in 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 Florida. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm still in Germany. We still have four schools in Germany, um, in Florida, and in Hawaii, and in Greenville, South Carolina, and so we built a lot in the last twenty five years, now. So yeah, yeah, fantastic. And these are full time. <laughs> Uh, units these are actual these, yeah yeah they're, they're, they're their own building they are, they are, they're all they all, uh, all my instructors are full full time pretty much in germany uh, they have some uh, other uh, jobs a few a few also full time but the most are pretty full time and take on lawyer wow, that's fantastic so i mean how many do you know how many students there are across the across your group oh that's a good question I never think about this. <laughs> I don't no, know. No, I just it, around a thousand maybe or so. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, active. of course. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. And you still and more, well, probably more, no? But yeah, yeah, of course. And when I initially made contact with you, you were in Germany at the time, I believe. Um, and you were visit. How many times do you visit? You go several times back. No, uh, no, no. I go still. I do. So, as I said, I just came back for three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, I do on a regular basis um, seminars all, all three months or so, three, four months. Yeah. They're coming to us and they'll be making international camps. Like last year, we was in Korea. You heard it probably, no? So. Um, oh, yes. Was that. Uh... In October, we had a tool tour in, uh, yeah, in yeah. Korea. Also combined with the German schools and the, uh, and the American schools. Yes, yes. Uh, How was that? How was that experience? Oh, great. It was, yeah. it was great. Yeah, it was yeah. a good trip. Very well organized and. It's a really good. It was a really good. As all my students, they loved it. No? So it was a very good trip. Fantastic. So and then <clears throat> your taekwondo is Chonji Dang and Dosan. Yes. Um, Juche or or um, Kodang. Kodang, yes. Kodang, yeah. 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 All 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 twenty four patterns from the traditional taekwondo. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but it's traditional non sine wave. Is that right? No sign my friend. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Mm. Did um did you did you ever meet General Che or or never? I never had this like really. Uh, but of course I study his 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 tapes, his books. I, I have him in my school too with his uh, statement, you know. Yes. Yes. And, uh, so um, but I never had this luck to meet him personally. No. 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 Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, but no. I had Master Kwan. He was at the pioneer from him. You know, he was for the group sixty five. Uh, Master Ch General Che Hong Yi sent our group over there. So yes. the Quan Chiba was a part of it. So um I can imagine how much the um yeah, yeah. he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So um uh, do you still teach today? Is that is that your passion oh, yeah. every day or every day? Yeah, yeah. It's almost no day where I have not my uniform on. <laughs> so right, right, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So and um and um, and you still train yourself, obviously. Um oh yeah. Yeah, have you ever? Do you have a routine you do every day, or is it different, or how you feel? It's different. Uh, as I said, I, I like to go my forms pretty much. Not every day, but you know, I have not always time. I have so much thing to do, no? but I, I, I change it. You know, do my forms, do of course my physical work, and stay active. I'm running two, no? two, two, three times a week or so, no? so. Yeah, and do you believe in conditioning, sir? You condition your hands. Oh yeah. I, I, thought I saw your. your did I see your four fists just then, sir? Did I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see. I see this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. They are, I, you know, and I uh, really expect it for for my higher belts too. They do this, you know, before they hit uh, some stuff. They have to condition the hands first, now. So no, no. I'm a strong believer on conditioning and blocking. And uh, I think we are one from the very rare um, uh, taekwondo styles. What we did, where we do our form all in front as a as a with partner. Also, to get um, the idea from the, um, the, what the forms means and for what the application, you know, for what you use it. And they all have to block. They learn to block, you know, John Chiong to get a block, 
clock, you know, so it goes up to the highest forms. So um, they have to condition their hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this is this is great to hear, sir, because... Um... Yeah, it's martial arts, you know, you have to condition not just the hands, the whole body, not the legs, the, the core, everything. Yeah, so. 100%, yeah. I mean, I think some some uh, schools focus on competition so much that they don't do yeah. that so much. It's always got the gloves, Yeah, and, you know, but um, like you say, you have to have this kind of, to have the martial art ready to use if you ever have to, you know. Yeah. So how do you how do you do your conditioning? So you do push up. Well, the most come with push ups. Push ups on 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 the knuckles. So you know, I think I cannot do push ups on hands anymore. <laughs> so when I, when I see my students, why are you on your hands? How you can do this on your hands? You have, you have to use a fist. You know, put the fist on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, and, of course, and then we have the makiwari. You know, was the yeah. Japanese style. At the Korean way, they think dan or so on. And yeah. uh, we're using this too a lot. And there are a lot of. Uh, things to to use them now hands on hands of course physical too yeah but yeah of course and then the forearm the the, yeah. the king together yeah 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 and uh like you said the core muscles as well yeah fantastic and uh so uh so you 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 can i ask how old you are sir is that okay that again can i ask your age my age, yeah, I'm 65. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, you don't look that age, sir. You look very strong, physical. Are you? Yeah. Are you feel that way? Do you? Huh? Are you? Do you feel? Um, do you feel like age is a barrier, or are you? No, not at all. Probably... I think age is just a number. Yeah. So, I'm, I truly believe this, and of course, and um, you have to. Of course, you have to make a lifestyle for this, you know. And uh, when you say you're old and you cannot do this and you cannot do this, then you cannot do this. You know, it's just, it's just simple. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. I see a lot of people that come in my school and we change their lifestyle a little bit and their habits, life habits, and all the kind of thing. No? And so soon they start, they get back to the old routine again. Then they're getting again in the old routine. You know, of course, you call this discipline a little bit. When you get older, you have to take care about yourself. I think you have to take care of yourself when you're young too, but you think differently about it. And you always think um, nothing can hurt me, nothing can, that's the young thing, it's a normal thing now, but so soon you get older. You know, when I see my instructors, they're 38 years now or 35 or whatever, they say how old they are and this, this is pain and this is pain. Then I tell them always get used to it. <laughs> yes, <know>? yes. <laughs> Fantastic, sir. So, so how, with the, the tenets of Taekwondo, how do you, um, and, and uh, the philosophy, the, the mental aspect and the moral, do you see, do you, do you teach that in, in your classes as well? Oh, yeah. I have him here big on my, on my, uh, on my thing. So maybe, I don't know if I can show you this. Uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I have here big wood panels with all the tenants on the Taekwondo. On the yeah, Taekwondo. Yeah. So here, you see this here? Oh, yes. Oh well, wow. no, I have him here right in the entry. I'm a strong believer on uh, on the tenants of Taekwondo. No? Yeah, yeah. We have him. We have him even on our uniforms on the sleeves. The original, the original writing from Master General Cheung in the book. Yes, know? yes. I have him. Uh, the black belt have him all on the sleeves. Fantastic, sir. Yeah, and uh, so you teach the philosophy. Uh, do you teach, do you have anything to do with meditation or anything like that? Or is Taekwondo yeah. the meditation itself? That's, you know, I'm teaching also Kimodo. I don't know, you know, this is a Korean um, Tai Chi. So oh, yes. uh, called Kimodo. Yeah. And uh, I met uh, uh, Grandmaster John P. Choi for a long time from, uh, from Ohio. And um, I fall in love with this. Uh, you're always looking at martial arts school. You have your own martial arts school too, no? You're always still looking for something like this, you know, for meditation, yoga, uh, whatever. Yeah. But it's not that, that's or a tai chi. But it doesn't fit really to to the traditional taekwondo, no? Or taekwondo general. Yeah. And um, and then I I, I met um, in a martial arts convention, Master uh, Choi, and he was teaching kimodo. I never heard this before. So this is the Korean way of tai chi, which means uh, okay. life of energy. Yes, and, yes. Uh, 
and I bothered him. So soon, of course, I did not know him. No? And then after the convention, I asked uh, the management, who is Master, uh, Master Joy? I want to learn this kimono. And she gave me the phone number from Ohio, where he was in his school and stuff. And um, I was running behind him almost a half year. He never answered me, really. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. the typical Korean. No? And uh, then yeah. finally, I got him one time on the phone and said, yeah, you, everybody want to learn, but never, uh, nobody want to do it, really. Or, I asked him, do you have a tape or something? No, I don't have tapes. You need to come. You want to learn, you need to come. I said, okay, let me know when I have to come. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I um, then I, I really was hunting him down until he was teaching me this. No? And then I went up to Ohio uh, uh, first two, three times alone. And then with, uh, took some students. And I was then the first um, American certified Kimoto instructor under him. So why he never was really certified people, you know. I gave him yeah. the business idea, and after this, he started to certify people and stuff, right? So, oh, wow. but I was really consistent on him and say, I need to learn this, and uh, so we do a kimura in our school and also in wow. all the other schools, pretty much, and so on. Uh, that's very relaxing. It's the yes. uh, you say it's the power of stretching, the power of breathing, and the power of mind, thing like this, no? Wonderful, and it it complements the. The Taekwondo, yeah. The... Oh, yeah. Um, but this is, as I said, this is the Korean style. So all the words are the same, you know what I mean? So all, all the stances, you're learning the stances very nice in this way. Right? The stances are pretty, exactly Taekwondo stances and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, how they do this. Um, it's just, just perfect for Taekwondo, no? Oh, wonderful. Is this, old, is this uh, an old thing that Koreans have done for a long yeah, time? Yeah, very, very old. Um, uh, as I said, I so I so I really met only Cho Master uh, Choi who is teaching this, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'd love to come over and 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 train with you, sir. So experience that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one, maybe it's coming up sometimes in one from the um, seminar. I don't know. As I am apart from the ITF, so I'm yeah. pretty sure I will teach one time a seminar about this somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That sounds amazing. So, so you you um do you attend competitions regular? Does your group or? Not so no, much. Um, not really. Um, as I said, we are traditional Taekwondo is not really, we are not combined with WTF or stuff. So, you know, and, um, we have, uh, we call it the Florida Cup. So we have a different schools. We have a, in um, in for Laura Dela School and we have in the villages and we had in Melbourne yeah. one. So we call it the Florida Cup. We have always three three or four um, competition a year in different yeah cities of Florida, yeah, and uh, you can win your own trophies in every tournament, but you can combine trophies, uh, points from the whole year from different, yeah. and who have the most points wins the Florida Cup. Okay. So it's but it's the only competition where we do, really. Yeah. It's pretty much um, take on the family intern. No? Yes, so. I understand. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And um, so what advice would you have for students that, you know, a student that's training, um, for the students, or for the students, um, just go on a regular basis, yeah. change your lifestyle, you know, but, uh, um, when you like to do Taekwondo, so we say oh, you have to come at least twice a week, in yes. our school they can come all, every day when they want, no? Okay. but at least twice a week to make a little bit of progress and you want to come more, then you come more, and usually when they are up to a yellow belt, then they get the vibe a little bit, so you know, yeah, yeah, and so um, just be consistent, you know, and keep going, no? Yeah, because people, uh, students reach plateau, don't they? They, they, they progress and then it, it flattens. And sometimes, yeah. uh, the same in our school. Sometimes they, their progress slows down and they they get bored or yeah, that kind that's, of thing, you know. And that's what I call that now instructors. That this is the instructor thing. You have to motivate him somehow. Yeah. And of course, it's not always easy. I I do know this, no. But of course, it's also how you teach. We need to maybe to teach a little bit differently. Do every day a little bit something different. You know, not always every day the same. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was raised. Oh my God, we we you know exactly what came up with our instructor. Huh? First was stretching, then was a little bit kicking, and then we split the group. And the routine was hundred percent always the same. <laughs> and of course, you have to go through this, you know. When uh, but the time what we have now, we have a different knowledge and a different things how to teach, and um, you can do the, you can do the same thing but different every day, no? Yeah, yeah, opinion. yeah, yeah. Creative training. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So your age range in your schools, it, it begins at? As so a youngest of four and uh, the okay. oldest, I think, is around 87 now or so. I wow. Yeah. Wow. So we have. And do you have a mix of everyone? Or is it more this more under 13? Or 
is it similar? Yeah, of course. They're, you know, we're running after school program too. So yeah. we pick up uh, kids from the school, right. uh, bring them in our school and the parents pick them up for us. So of course, uh, our majority is at uh, the daytime, of course, children's. Nah? Yeah. But in the night, so after six, seven, we have, uh, then it's pretty mixed between youth, teenagers, adults. Nah? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a good com uh, good mix on, on the school anyway, you know. So yeah. of course, the after school program is big in the afternoon. Nah? There are a lot of children here. And the adults, they can go become instructors at some point. Yeah, they can. So yeah. as I said, we have a, so we have a, a curriculum complete up to the masters. And um, so soon they're rebels, then they can test for assistant instructor, for instructor and all. So we have this very organized to get yeah. the teachers and instructors in our school. Fantastic. And uh, um, do you have advice for um, instructors? You know, what, what makes for a great instructor? That's hard. Yeah. The instructors are the hardcore people. Eh? Yeah. They are the, the most are. And so, this is when you see our school, you know, of course, they're teaching at the daytime with the, with, the with the kids and all the stuff. And then they get annoyed, maybe, or they get frustrated with children. And and then when the, when the, I, I tell them, you need to love, everybody lo tells me, all of them, they tell me how much they love Taekwondo. No? Then yeah. I tell them always, you need to do something with their love. No? So not to be tired, you know, you, first you have to love to practice still when you're an instructor. Yeah. Why I said uh, I think I'm the best example in our school. I still love to practice at this other daily time, no? And they go home and say, Oh, I'm tired when the practice time is. And I say, Why are you go home now? Oh, I'm tired. I'm frustrated. Blah blah. I say, Now is the time to join your love, right? So now get your energy back. Go take a uniform on, put the belt down, and work for yourself. Right? Get your head free. Get physically active. And so as a first, I think you they need to love. Yeah. Practice. yeah yeah and I'm then sure. what they really need to do they have to love to um work on the basic skills again you know but as i was yeah. saying about the master uh, you have to master a skill right but of course we you have a different when you uh, grow up to um, martial arts not just taekwondo no? in your yeah. style whatever you practice uh, you you have to master first um, the beginners you know and then you have to master the intermediate and then you have to master the advanced, and then you have to master the black belt, and then you have to master the teaching. You know what I mean? There are so many skills to master, really, no? So Yeah, yeah. You know where I come, but I think the whole thing starts always with the basic. So I think you still, you have to, it doesn't matter what level you are, I still love to practice John Chi Hyung. That's still my favorite form, no? Yeah. When you work on this hard, you learn so much out of it, just on stances, on, on the down block, on the middle block. There's not so much in there, you think. But I still love, is you have to love to practice the basic skills. Yeah. You do this, you uh, will be successful. By, um, you're teaching, you know, with the teaching skills, you're getting better, You what they tell you. No? So, But you have to master your skills, your yes, basic yeah. skills. And you have to love to teach them all the time. Not just, oh, I'm a black belt, I don't need this anymore. Or I'm an instructor, I don't need this, you know. And this is what I see on the you have to motivate yourself to love to, to teach the basics. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other one, you have to love to put your uniform on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This... Of they're, 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 they're just with t shirt and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the class is not even, even over. The, Take the uniform of why your uniform is off already. Do you know practice that practice a little bit for yourself? You know, I think you have to love to put the uniform on. Yeah, yeah just the procedure to put the belt on and close the belt. That is for me like you know everybody have problems and stuff. So soon I put my belt on me and then I say okay now it's time you know whatever is behind me right now, uh, family problem, financial problem, whatever problem is. But now you're ready for class. Yeah. Right. So I think it's a, such an important thing to put the uniform on and tie your belt. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So that's my yes. uh, the instructor. You have to love you, what you do. It starts with you. practicing, with uh, put your uniform on, teach uh, and practicing skills, uh, basic skills. So I think that's a very you do this as an instructor. I think is you're on a good road. Fantastic. <laughs> now, great message, sir. Really important, and I'm sure the listeners and people watching will take a lot from that. Uh, like you say, it's the simple things, isn't it? That, that yeah, that made a difference when we first started, and 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 can still today. You know, with like the mindset that once I got my uniform on, that's it. I'm here now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah.
Fantastic, sir, sir. Yeah. So w when we're teaching the tenants, we, we teach during, the, du du during the, um, the class and yeah. uh, my, uh, of the school kids, they have to um, they have to say them every day in the circle. You yeah. Know? So as a, we teach them pretty much. Yeah, yeah. All consistently. No? And we teach it all the way from children up to adult. Yeah, all of them. Of course, the spirit, the person. And you know, when we have in our in our testing curriculum, so when the, uh, the students go for a new belt, you know, yeah. we have all the active side, and then I have a table on the side with our masters and, and our seniors, senior masters, yeah. and they ask questions. You know, they have to they have to fill out, out on, on our testing application uh, on our backside some questions. What's the name for the form? What's the name for the kick? Blah blah blah. No? And these are also in the Korean um, yeah. terminology. And then they have to go to the table and they have to have to answer questions and they ask also about the tenants and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So we are still very traditional in the modern time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's there's, there's something, isn't it? That it's very unique and and uh, Taekwondo is Korean. You know, it's okay. it, it, we we must never forget this thing and no, uh, the values. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic, sir. Um, I did see online you're doing some breaking. You still like to break? Oh, still... yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I do. Very impressive, sir. I saw some. Thank some you. Cut. Yeah, yeah. All you kind can... of stuff. Do you have a, a favorite? What's your, your favorite? No, thing? I don't. I, honestly, no. I don't. You know, I, uh, in uh, the style where we, I come from, from Master Kwon, we broke all the time and, and all kind of different stuff. And as I said, he came here, surprised you. He showed a technique in the seminar and then he called you up and said, now break with this technique. And he said, whoa, okay. So let's do this now. So I don't have really not any favor. I all I, I invented a lot. I created a lot. Okay. Uh, you know, and um, I love to be creative too in the, in the breakings, you know? So, yeah, yeah. On a, almost in every event, what what we do, I do always some uh, I try to do sometimes a different one. Uh, so they are not say, oh, I see this again, and they say, oh, he have something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have to be pine, brick, tiles. No, all kind of stuff. You know, yeah. you know, all mixed as a wood. I didn't break for a while or wood not anymore, but yeah, I'm pretty much with the bricks and you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The hardcore. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. So yeah, excellent. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, recently, you joined ITF HQ. Yeah. Is that how did you find out about them? Uh, no, they found out about me. No, so I did not oh, really. Yeah. I, I know Master uh, Master CJ and Master CB uh, since uh, six years ago um, when we was the first time in uh, Korea. I think eighteen. Yeah. Okay. And um, since then, I know him. Since there, I know him. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, looks like we was always in contact with what we did our first tool tour. And um, I think uh, Master Sitcha likes what we do. And um, we are so traditional. And I think he also likes my leadership and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's how, I, how we came up with this now. No? So he offered me uh, to work with ITF when I was thinking about it. We talked about it. So and I, I think it's a good way to yeah, bring yeah. tech people together again, traditional and design a system too, no? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic, and uh, yeah, the toll too. I haven't been yet. I, I'm very keen to to experience it. Um, and you said it was fantastic. The toll tour. Toll tour is as a really. We had we, we, as I said, we did the first eighteen that was good, and uh, uh, now there's this one too. You really have to say thank you um, to Master CJ and Master CB and Miss Sabrina also. Uh, they are really do everything to make for everything only only the best, you know. Yeah, but as you know, you travel a lot. You travel, a, and I, 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 I organize a lot of stuff too. And this is really hard when you travel with the bus, and you have a delay, and then this did not work, and this. But they always try. You know, you never go hungry in bed, and so they always make sure you get something to eat. Your hotel is ready. Yeah. Uh, also, what we look, you know, all the 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 monuments and everywhere we're looking the history. There's always thing. Uh, nothing is perfect in this world, but they try to do it. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really, really cool tour and really good organized. Huh? Yeah, preserve the culture, the history. Yeah, 
to keep it alive. It's beautiful. When you do Taekwondo, and especially when you do uh, the tools, you know, with the with the names, John Ji Hong, Tang Hong, Hyung, uh, Se Chong Hyung, whatever, you can yeah. see this all, and you can show this your your in, uh, your students and yourself too. This really was happen. Yeah. You know, this why you by this why they name it like this. I think I think it's the coolest thing ever for Taekwondo. Yeah. No? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Fantastic, sir. So are you somebody that uh, likes quotes, famous quotes? Do you have your own quotes? Is there things that you say or you like to... Uh, is there anything particular from, from other people? You know what I mean? Uh, people like, you know, Bruce Lee was a big uh, influence on people. Was Bruce Lee an influence on you, sir, at any time? Um... Yeah, not you know. Of course, I, this was in the seventies, right? Yeah. Of course, everybody everybody liked him, and you know, I had um, there there's a newspaper, so magazines in and not newspapers, so magazines, so teen teen magazines, right? And uh, where you buy every week when you're young and so yeah, on, yeah, you know. Yeah. And um, they had a puzzle, so each a, a site with with a Bruce Lee uh, poster, and you had when you collect them, then you have a big big poster. You can put him on the wall, no? Yeah, this is what yeah. I did, of course. No? I tried to this, and then finally I had him on my wall. No? But he was not, <laughs> of course, he was in this time pretty much one of the best. No? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But it was not really an influence. I said, not so I want to follow him or something. Sure, that's, sure. That's really, that's, he was good and a 100% a role model and an example for martial art people. No? That's yeah, yeah. For me too, no? but it's not so I want to follow him. So that's not no, so no, of course not. No, of course but not. he was, um, well, I said, my quote is I have this on, 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 my, on my paper. Sometimes commit your spirit to the excellence, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I really strive for. And so you have commit to do your spirit to excellence, try your best, yeah, 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 work so hard as possible, and things are happen when you do this, no? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, sir. And so the never the biggest, give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, all these things. Yeah. So, so the biggest influence on you was is the Grandmaster. Your biggest oh, influence. Yeah. yeah, I would say I had a multiple. I had my own Master Heinrich Dulling. I learned from him uh, the basic from Taekwondo and really uh, how to run schools and stuff. No? And then yeah. of course Kwon Chiba was the the Grandmaster for us all of us and. He was a really big influence. I mean, of course, he changed my life. Now. For him, I, I moved from Bavaria to Berlin, from Berlin to Florida. So, of course, um, I'm the only one who got the green card in his Taekwondo system. Yeah. On the official in America. So he changed my life. Now. That's wow, for sure. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So your your relationship with him, was it always student and grandmaster? Or did you become friends or...? No, yeah, well, you know, that's always, a, but I, I think we always had the right, uh, right distance to be, he's my grandmaster and I'm the student. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think this, no? So I would say, yeah, it's a, a kind of a friendship, but not, you know, not a, no. a hugging <laughs> friendship, yes. also, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and uh, but in his day, was he quite a, a fierce person or was he always mellow? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah, he came, could be very calm, but he could be very fearful too. Yeah, yeah. You know that it was the old time, and um, there was no mercy. Um, you need to do what he says, no? Yeah, yeah. When you do, or don't. <laughs> so then you're not long really uh, uh, around in the the take on the family when you yeah. as a, to grow up really, no? So right, uh, you experienced probably two or uh, Korean grandmasters, no? In the old yeah. time. That's... Yeah, yeah. Very much. But this is why we are what we are, I think. Why we, we had this luck. I still think this was luck. And uh, we had this uh, prestige to really to train under, uh, under masters like this. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. So, That's yeah. what I tell my, my students now, you know, get the best out of so long I'm here around you guys. Why after this, are you guys in charge? So and I hope you can keep it up too. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is true. So this is very true. Yeah, I, I managed to train with... Um... I interviewed two people uh, on the podcast that I hadn't met. Uh, well, I, I kind of met them because they were in championships, but uh, Grandmaster Cutler and Grandmaster O'Neill. And I recently trained with them. Uh, Grandmaster Cutler is in his 70s. And, uh, yeah, he still he still has the the way, if you like, the way he was learned, the way he trains. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. And uh, it was brilliant. It was fantastic. It was, uh, 
really enjoyable training, but mm. proper hard like like yeah. like it is. Yeah. You survive or not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I echo everything you say, sir. I really appreciate that. And um, um, yeah, so uh, training has to be a certain level. Uh, so yeah, your grandmaster, how how good was he in, in his day? What do you mean? With his uh, actual uh, his performance, he was very well, good. Um, as I said, no, he, that's what we learned from him. No? He was the same. No? He loved uh, to practice every day. He trained. Um, so his opinion is you have to train. Um, uh, you have to uh, teach every every uh, hour. No? There was no way to to let a instructor, a young instructor, to teach in your school. No? Yeah. You have to teach. You know, when I opened this school in Berlin, I was teaching six, seven hours a day. Right, so, right. Of course, I built a new school that I know, but also when I came up with red belts and blue belts or whatever, um, it was just not, uh, never, I was thinking somebody else have to teach for myself, you know, I, this, this was my job. No? So now yeah. the newest generation is the, so soon there are black belts, they say, oh, you can teach for me and so on. No? I said, why you let him teach? You have to learn. I said, well, how about you teach first and you give him a little group and so on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, um, he, of course, I think he was very unique, Master Con. And um, from his style, uh, for sure, one of the best. I, I met a lot of masters now. Yeah, hundred uh, percent, one of the best. Now, so fantastic. So it was um, very much luck that you found him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic, sir. Uh, wonderful story. So um, pleased that we were able to um, record this and share it with many people. Okay. And, uh, There'll be a lot of people watching and listening, I'm sure, that will draw a lot from what you said. Um, I hope so. No, no, 100%. Sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I certainly have. I've learned so much, you know, and I kind of, I'm able to pick up on, on the things that you're talking about from my own experience so I can share with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's the motivation behind this is to sort of uh, listen to the people that before me and before us, like yourself, um, and learn as much as we can from from how close you were to the to the original masters uh, very close so uh, as i said in the village of master Heinrich to we were very close now we went out for dinner for a beer so yeah. uh, we had a, uh, we, we, we had a good friendship too no? yeah but of course with our grandmaster master con we uh, as i said we had a distant friendship no? i'm pretty sure we had a friendship but uh, on a different level, no? on a yeah. respect, a more respectful level. No? But when Master Henry, you know, in the villages, you know each other, you know everybody, everywhere you go, and yeah. um, you spend a lot of time together. So we had, I think, we had a really good friendship to, uh, with my master. No? When I think my students with me too, on yeah. a, but also on a different. I said, this is what I learned from him too. You know, you have to be a human being, and you have to be involved in uh, in the life of your students too a little bit. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So you can be there for them, yeah. positive influence, on, help them. Well, sir, thank you so much. Mr. Master Hudson, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice talking to you. Thank, thank you for you, having sir. me on your podcast or on your interview. It was nice talking to you. Oh, thank you, sir, so much. Appreciate that and your time today. Um, as I say, thank you for sharing so many things with us. I really enjoyed it and um, look forward to sharing this with, with my own students and, and uh, you know, the, the wider world. And hopefully, sir, I will meet you one day in person. I, uh, I hope so. I think it will be happen. <laughs> Florida is as, very as, nice. I heard, as I heard, we have a championship coming up in the UK. Yes. So I'm planning to be there. Oh, fantastic. They, we will meet then, yeah, in November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, sir. I look forward to it very much. All right, then thank you for your time. All the best, sir. And you have a good rest of your afternoon. It's morning in, in my time now. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.